Hello and welcome everybody to yet another of my endgame build highlight videos. Today we're going to look at the Rothgeist Vitality Promise Strike Ritualist. Now this one I was playing in the Season 4 of the Community League as well and it's going to be just as viable in Season 5 I'm pretty sure. Now you can play Vitality Promise Strike with the Rothgeist set and with the Rydog medal in the Vanilla game as well already. However the Marrow Wills Soul Piercer from the Community Season mod that I was playing enables the build even earlier while leveling and makes this already pretty fun build even better especially for a ranged playstyle. In the vanilla game you can use for example a wild blood crusher to make this work with melee or with the soul lance slash mythical soul lance as ranged. However none of those items are really like catered towards vitality prom strike and those are legendary items so not quite as like accessible especially while leveling as the Marowal soul piercer. I use this build actually a lot in the season, especially to like push the boundless dungeons and to push Shadow Realm. You can probably also kill quite some of the super bosses with proper kiting. Um, you can, I mean, easily kill Mogdrogon already, and you can probably also like with proper kiting kill somebody like Ravager, maybe even Kalagaja. Obviously, Blokar and Bourbon clones are easy anyway. And then you can also kill probably a decent amount of like the league specific super bosses. I killed Balrog myself um, with this character and some others might be also doable, maybe like Garia, I don't know. You can try to push the build yourself to the, to the limit as well. But overall the build is lots of fun, tons of fun if you enjoy Promise Strike builds or all already. This is a very nice alternative, visually it looks stunning with the like pink Promise Strike and it is tons of fun. Let's take a look at the skill point allocation here for this build for the end game. Now, Obviously, Promise Strike is your main ability, so you want to max out the Promise Strike, max out Torrent, and max out Storm Surge, as well as picking the Thunderous Strike modifier to make Promise Strike spammable. You can actually also not spam Promise Strike on this character, or like on this build, if you want to, because the weapon also gives you like minus one second skill recharge. So, especially for like specific super bosses, I can actually see using a cooldown promise strike being better because you have to kite so much around against some of those bosses that you don't really have like lots of windows to you know like actually attack or like keep attacking um, so you might want to play like cooldown promise strike against certain super bosses but in this case this build was mostly like used for farming shadow realm and like the dungeons as well so for that of course spamming promise strike is the smoother gameplay and is gonna be like quicker at farming stuff as a two-handed build, I also maxed out Brute Force. The percent physical and internal trauma damage is obviously useless, but the flat lighting damage will be converted to Vitality via like the gear that we have to also convert the entire Promise Strike over to Vitality. Um, the health is useful as well. The Ritualist does have a ton of health though, so it's maybe not even that necessary. But the flat damage is still insanely good. Uh, Devouring Swarm. 17 out of 16 points here. I only have like plus one all skills to shaman as you can see and then other than that just like tons of points to promise strike. So only 17 points here but 17 points still translate to 56% vitality resistance reduction so that is I mean mandatory to have for any vitality build as your uh, as a shaman. One point Magdor gets packed. The scaling of this isn't necessarily that great to be honest. Um, and yeah like some regen I mean who cares right I mean on this build you don't care. Uh, Heart of the Wild, 6 points. 6 points is currently the sweet spot for Heart of the Wild when it comes to the like percent health gained. I mean up to 6 points you get at least 3% per point, then you get only 2% health, and then after 10 points we get only 1%. Or like Actually it's like 1-2% to 2 depending on like um, the points that you put. So 6 and 10 are like the sweet spots. Um, I decided to only go for 6 points because, well, we have enough health already anyway, we have tons of health, and the poison and bleeding duration reduction, maybe in the future if there's some like super poisonous or super bleeding boss, I don't know, but currently you don't need it that badly, and you're gonna like leech against that anyway, the build has tons of leech, as long as you keep attacking in some way or form, um, you're gonna not have to care too much about poison bleed anyway. We are maxing out the oak skin, however. Oak skin is always nice for the flat armor, percent pierce and aether resistance as well as defensive ability. So yeah, we put 11 out of 10 points here. Then we have one point in Renegade Totem and I think actually only one point in Blood Pact, but we have like plus seven points in Blood Pact. Um, well, the reason for this is, I mean, one point in Renegade Totem itself is not going to do anything, right? You don't really care about that. 
the healing also only works if both you and the enemy stand inside it and as a ranger build you kind of don't want that to happen really um blood pact on the other hand only requires you to stand next to the totem and then you will get this bonus which gives you the percent vitality damage flat vitality damage and leech so i mean it's perfect for like a vitality damage um especially like a weapon damage based vitality build like this one is the second class is the necromancer in this case you can also choose like Honestly, this kind of build is pretty flexible when it comes to secondary classes. You can play a Necromancer, you can play an Octotust, you can probably even play an Oath Keeper. Um, but yeah, I would say Octotust and Necromancer are like the more obvious choices. In this case, I went for Necromancer. You have Bone Harvest, One Pointed, One Point Dread, and then like a Maxed Out Soul Harvest. Maxed Out Soul Harvest is obviously insanely good because of all the flat damage being added to your Promise Strike attacks. And also, I believe we convert some, if not all, of the cold damage to vitality as well maybe we actually don't yeah we do have some elemental vitality damage on the chest and the shoulders here right 28 plus 35 um, and also on the four piece we have another 30 percent so this is 65 and then 28 on top of 65 it's not quite 100 percent in this case but i mean you can see it's like really really good already so that is huge damage that you get from soul harvest because not only do you get full value out of the vitality damage but also almost full value from the flat cold damage so really 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 important skill here to max out uh 12 out of 10 points at ill omen ill omen is your bread and butter um damage reduction debuff here you just want to spam this and have this active all the time just like soul harvest these two need to be like on your buttons that you're basically just smashing whenever they're off cooldown um don't even like think about it too much just make sure that these are active all the time these debuffs on the enemy because uh 26 damage reduction is pretty much your main defense on this build um it was like one of the main defenses of this build certainly insanely powerful um then we have a maxed out spectral binding 14 out of 12 points here for the flat health the flat oa um the aether damage actually on this build he also convert because of the Rhydog mark, converting not only lightning but also Aether damage to Vitality on Promise Strike. So again, nothing really lost here apart from the percent Aether damage, which, I mean, whatever. Um, it's insanely good as well. And then Spectral Wrath, the secondary, even more important, whenever you get hit by anything, can also be like a ranged or like a dot or like a spell, you're gonna retaliate with a, like, Spectral Wrath ability that reduces the enemy Vitality resistances. And that is important, like, insanely important. Vitality resistance reduction is, again, for any vitality build ever just mandatory so i mean because of all like resistances work in this game you want these abilities always maxed out pretty much so yeah a mandatory cap here call of the grave in this case it's only a one pointer um if you have spare points somehow and or you like this ability for some reason even more than i do um feel free to even like max this out it is a great like damage boost um, gives you crit damage, percent vitality damage, and so on. The problem, however, is that it has only 10 second duration and 20 second, 23 second recharge. So, uh, and the build doesn't really have, like, great cooldown reduction overall. So, the uptime isn't that amazing, right? If you have a caster, for example, with, like, global CDR, and you have way better uptime on this because of your CDR, then this is even better than on this build. Um, but still, like, for one point, for, like, some slight damage boost, if you don't mind pressing the additional button, it is a good ability. If you do mind pressing the additional button, however, you could also remove this completely and not play this at all. But I would recommend, like, one-pointing it. Uh, six points Mark of Torment. Six points for 46% damage absorption is kind of like a sweet spot. Uh, of course, if you want to, like, become even tankier and have, like, a better defensive skill here, you can put in more points. But six points at least is mandatory, and, I mean, every Necromancer has to play around Mark of Torment. It is not the easiest to use skill at first if you're like new to this game but i mean if you're watching this you shouldn't be like that new to the game first of all anyway and second of all i mean just use it right it's, it's a great ability it it's like a mirror in a way not quite as strong of course but still like really 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 good it's a bit annoying like having to like you know click on the right enemy sometimes um but i mean against bosses that shouldn't be an issue anyway and against bosses especially especially this is like really 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 strong and mandatory basic as well harbinger of souls the exclusive i mean there isn't really much of a choice here you could also play primary bond but honestly it's not as great here it does have like percent damage absorption but because of mark of torment existing 
Going like double absorption skills is really like not quite as good. And I mean Harbinger of Souls gives you attack speed, uh, percent vitality, flat vitality, with decay, 11% leech. I mean it's just absolutely amazing for this kind of build. I mean there's no no real debate here to be had. Just pick Harbinger of Souls, right? That's all you can do. Uh, keep in mind Promise Strike is not a default attack replacer, so none of these weapon pool skills like, like Necrotic Edge, Reaping Strike, and Feral Hunger or Upheaval will work, so don't even think about putting points here, they don't work. Devotions next. So for Devotions I was playing, of course, as for every vitality build, mandatory with a Fratosh, right? This one was pretty good. Um, then Hungering Void, the other tier 3 devotion here, also pretty good. You can on this build actually also consider playing Abominable Might. This um, could be potentially even more damage, honestly. However, this requires you to go for a bit more like offensive devotions, like 18 green instead of 15 blue, for example, would mean a bit more like defense, uh, offensive devotion setup. And in my opinion, the build already has great damage, so it doesn't really need even more damage. But uh, A Bomb over Dying God would be not a bad choice because the weapon itself has Chaos to Vitality Conversion. And I believe something else here might have that as well. I'm not quite sure. But yeah, the weapon especially has Chaos of It conversion. So not only would you get like percent vitality damage out of this Abomination proc, you would also get flat Chaos, which you can convert to vitality as well. So it would be a very, very good alternative to Dying God. Other than that, you need also flat resistance reduction, right? 24 reduced target resist resistances, like this type of debuff, this type of resistance reduction. The build doesn't have that from the masteries yet, so Raise the Dead is the choice here. On a Vitality build, you could also consider something like Tip the Scales, of course, that also has the same kind of resistance reduction. However, this one being a, you know, quick attacking default, I mean, not the default, but like a, an attacking build, right? Raise the Dead has Leech and Attack Speed on top, so these are just a natural fit for a build like this. Really, really good. Of course, this build being a 200 build, you pick Kraken, uh, no debate there. Uh, when you go, in my opinion, like really, really, really strong for vitality builds in general, and I personally like it more than bad on like attacking builds because of this node right here. Fizzras and attack speed, I mean, insane, bad doesn't have that. And uh, the proc itself is also pretty decent. Gives us some like additional leech whenever you're not attacking. Um, whenever you have to like just run away from enemies, then you can still leech a bit from this winning goes mark So that is like another kind of like leech safety net in a way uh, Tier 1 devotions to gain the affinity are Jackal, Spider, Satyr's Guide, Panther and Lotus So Spider, 6 green, really nice, has attack speed So as an attacker build you want Spider over say, I don't know, like Candle or Hawk or, or Raven anyway And then Jackal has total speed as well. Again, attack speed, really, really nice. 2% physical as well on top, why not? Um, over Ghoul, because honestly, we don't need more leech. We have so much leech already on this build. There is no need for more leech, and Ghoul would be two more points, which means you would have to sacrifice other points somewhere else. So, Jackal it is. Now, to get to the 15 blue, we have the Satyr's Guide. Movement speed, physical resistance over here, Cold Lightning Grass, overall, like, pretty nice. Also, the Slow Rest, that's not to be underestimated. Slow rest is really, really, really good as well for a build like this. Panther, just like a very generic good ability, or like good tier 1 devotion to give like 3 blue, 2 yellow affinity, and offensive ability and some crit damage. Lotus, on the other hand, a bit more defensive. 3 green, 2 red affinity, and then has 3% fizz rest over here on this node. Really nice. The rest is like, yeah, whatever. Some health, some energy regen, sure. And then, pretty much the only like real safety net here. Um, the only like circuit breaker this build has is the turtle. However, turtle is a great um, circuit breaker right here on patch 1.1.9.7. Gives you like fizzras over here on this node, which is already insane. Honestly, like 4% fizzras on the tier 1 devotion is absolutely nuts. And then on top of that, you have this like turtle shell, um, like absorption shield, which like procs at half your HP, gives you like another 6.1k absorption. Now, on a ritualist, that isn't actually like that amazing, but it's still not bad. And it's like, well, kind of cheap to fit in, right? It's like a tier one devotion, gives you like three blue, two yellow affinity, what you want anyway. And I mean, the other alternative would be to take Watcher. Um, Watcher is also not bad if you want like more armor and defensive ability. However, this build is kind of like low on armor. So like getting more armor 
on like low armor builds is like debatable when you could instead get more fizzers and get like a bubble. Um, in my opinion, on a build like this, the turtle is just better than the watcher. If you had like other circuit breakers already, and or if you had like armor and you want to go for like an armor stacking build, then the watcher is something I would still prefer over the turtle, over the tortoise. But on a build like this, um, I would always go for, go for turtle right now. Like it's just better. Now let's also talk about the gear. So core of this build is the Rod Guy set. For this one, you do not need to play any mods or anything like that, right? No community season needed for this one. This one is part of the Vanilla game. You can play Vitality Prime Strike already in the Vanilla game. With a Rhinoch Mark and a Rod Guy set, you are kind of set. However, as I said earlier, it is not quite as enjoyable to play for ranged in the Vanilla game. And also you will have a bit more, like, you will be struggling a bit more like while leveling compared to being able to, on top of the Radek Mark, being able to use the Marrow Wolves Soul Piercer. Now this is a League exclusive item, meaning you can only play it in these community leagues, and gives you like plus 4 Promise Strike, minus 1 second recharge to Promise Strike, has a 30% chance to pass through Promise Strike, giving you uh, even better AoE when you're like playing a ranged Promise Strike build, and on top of that like converts physical to vitality damage to Promise Strike, and add some like with decay damage to Promise Strike. So this one alone will not convert the lightning damage from Promise Strike, but Promise Strike by default is like Fizz Lightning Bleed, right? So the Fizz damage is being converted with the Marrow Soul Piercer, and the lightning damage will be converted with the Rhydox Mark. Um, and yeah, it also gives you the option to play cooldown Promise Strike if you want to, um, for some situations that is actually better than spamming Promise Strike. For the rings, I was playing a Mythical Signet of the Fallen for the resistance reduction, attack speed, flat vitality damage, percent vitality damage, in my opinion, pretty much a best in slot ring here. And then the other ring is very, like, flexible in my opinion. As you can see, I was playing a living ring, a elemental damage living ring with a charge prefix. The charge prefix, to be fair though, gets converted to vitality, right? The flat lightning of the charge prefix is basically vitality damage. So you do get like flat vitality damage here. Of arcane balance was only chosen because of resistances that I wanted to fix here. Feel free to use pretty much anything else that fixes your build and like especially fixes your resistances, right? Totally fine. Uh, for gloves, I was actually crafting gloves. You can craft these like uh, they're gonna be like yellow in the smith, right? They're gonna be like yellow plague guard grips, and then you can get additional affixes on top, like for example the rare tempest prefix and the magic alacrity suffix. Of alacrity gives you attack speed, so again, perfect for this build. Uh, tempest prefix, however, well, it's not bad. It gives you offensive ability and like resistances, but it also has yet again elemental damage, and this percent elemental damage is useless for this build. It is absolutely useless, and there is definitely a better affix out there that you could go for. However, I didn't have the time, nor the, nor the patience, um, nor the crafting materials, I guess, to like craft so many play guard grips here in the league to get something even better. I believe there are also some blues and some legendaries you could pick here. There's like a, uh, I think, Void Sea Gauntlets or something like that, purple pair of gloves you could pick that has like flat vitality damage and attack speed, like you just need to make make sure that, or like percent vitality damage and attack speed rather, you just make, you know, like, need to make sure that your gloves have attack speed and that they like support your build, right? You you want to get like affixes or stats on the blue or the purple that fix your resistances, maybe give you like flat or percent vitality damage, maybe give you like offensive ability as well. The build was struggling as you can see a bit to like get offensive and defensive ability up. So yeah, Tempest was still good because of like, you know, 5% offensive ability being really, really helpful. Also, these crafted gloves have physical resistance, 5% in this case, so honestly, this was a pretty good craft. Same can be said for the Stone Plate Greaves. These are yellow um, boots you can craft, and then you get a rare, for example, Cleric's Prefix on top, and a, for example, Magic Suffix of Fortitude. Um, here again, I was mostly using this to like fix my pierce resistance, I believe. Actually, I have too much on the boots, I don't even need that much on the boots. But they also give me like stun rest, and then like 5% fizz rest, because the boots are awesome. And the fortitude suffix gives you like physique, tons of physique, I believe, and clerics also has health on top. Again, 
feel free to use a more damaging option here with like some vitality damage boots instead. There are many other options you could go for, but I just want to like also highlight that crafted items in Grom Dawn are indeed useful. They can be really really good, these like yellow crafted items. They can really help fix the holes of a build that otherwise has holes in like resistances for example. And I, I feel like sometimes people like focus too much on like purple legendaries or blue items. They sometimes might also like use some green monster frequents, but they sometimes also like just overlook craftable items like play guard grips and stone plate greaves. These are insanely good. For the metal, of course we're using a Rydak mark. Um, it has the of readiness suffix, which in my opinion is pretty much the best magic suffix you can get in the game. And then it has the imposing prefix, which, well, doesn't add any vitality damage either in this case. It's just like physical damage actually, which is again useless. But it also is a pretty like tanky suffix, gives like some additional resistances, some health, some physique. Um, so overall this was a decent choice here. Again, there are prefixes like for example Dreadlords, giving you like more vitality flat or like leech on top. Or... Um, Incorruptible, giving you like insane resistances, or demonic, giving you like more vitality damage and also stun resistance. So, there are many other like affixes that you want to like look out for here, and this is not like the only thing you want. This is like the beauty with these monster frequent or like green items in general in Grim Dawn. There isn't like only one single affix combination that you want to look out for, there are many that work, and you just have to like you know try to fit together different like puzzle pieces. Um, and there are like many different puzzle pieces that can, you know, create a, an entire whole image. You just need to like find the ones that like fit together. And then you can like basically create the same image using like different pieces. Uh, Lunar Valgoth Wasteguard, this one, plus one all skills Necromancer, Chaos Divid conversion. Oh yeah, here is the remaining Chaos Divid conversion that together with the weapon would have like 100% Chaos Divid. So if you do choose to... Uh, first of all, either play like an Ocultus and have like tons of flat chaos there, and or you choose to play Abominable Might, you would convert pretty much all of the chaos damage here to Vitality. So yeah, that is an option um, to go for that. In this case, uh, my Luna Valgoth affixes are again suboptimal. Um, the resistant prefix had at least tons of poison rust, as you can see like 79 poison rust and I have only 26 overcap. So the poison rust on this was actually crucial. Of Scorch Runes, I think has like Elemental Rust and stuff like that. Not that bad either, but uh, I mean, again, this item has percent elemental damage. You do not convert percent elemental or percent lightning damage to vitality damage, it is just useless. And again, you could get a better pair of affixes here. However, I couldn't be like bothered farming Lunar Valgoth because honestly, it's a pretty annoying farm to do in the main campaign. And I got some of these spells, I believe, in Shadow Ram as well. Um, it's a little bit less annoying to get it there, but you also get like less per run compared to like just running here in the main campaign. Uh, in the end, these are kind of a pain to farm, honestly. Um, it is easy to get like any belt, but like a belt with like the perfect affixes is pretty hard to get. Um, so again, kind of like choose whatever you have, or like try to fit like the pieces of the puzzle together with the pieces that you do have, right? And don't try to like always go for like the perfect affix. There is no need to like GD stash or anything unethical like that here. Uh, Uruburg's Reaping. This is a great relic for pretty much any necromancer that also wants to get attack speed or casting speed and or flat vitality damage. This one has flat vit damage, all damage and percent vit damage on top. So like over 100% vitality damage actually. Additional leech, health, attack speed, plus one necro. The active ability is useless in this case. Unfortunately, it requires a mana weapon, right? You can't use it here. And the completion bonus is also absolutely fucking useless. It is uh, summon a blind fiend and race skeletons. I mean, I'm not playing a pet build here. So again, this build worked even with suboptimal relic completion bonuses and maybe also not like the best rolls on, these item, on this item itself. So if you, you know, like have more time than me for like min-maxing this character, feel free to, you know, make it better than I did. There is certainly some like room to improve here still. However, I couldn't be bothered in the league. Anyway, this build is tons of fun. As you can see from the gameplay that I'm gonna link down in the description as well. There are tons of like gameplay videos for this character. Check out the gameplay there. I probably won't bother like putting more videos here at the end of the video. Like more gameplay here. Just check out the videos down below please. And uh, yeah, have fun playing this build. Maybe this league, maybe next league. 
uh, just right now there's no league actually. But yeah, maybe next league or without the league mod, without Meryl's Soul Piercer, you might want to play it as a melee and or with the Soul Lance instead. Enjoy this build. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you around on the next one. And also as always, thank you so much everybody for supporting me and my channel on YouTube with membership, on Twitch with a sub there or on Patreon. Uh, thank you so much for all the people who have decided to become a Patreon last year, the last year before that, and also this year. Uh, without you guys, I wouldn't be able to make these kind of videos. So yeah, I appreciate every single one of you very much, and I wish you a happy and, how do you say that, like a enjoyable and fruitful year 2023.